Tarikatuna ashaba wa khairu fi jamia wa dar shahrat afat ast in our way is association to come together for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam under the eyes under the spirituality of our sheikh and blessing comes on the group that we can't get by ourselves the jelly manifestations come that we can't reach it sitting by ourselves according to shahu nakshiban Allah bless him and he warned us whatever you do not for the sake of Allah but for the sake to be famous is going to have something in it which destroys your good deeds you thought you were doing something good and you will find that the mice have eaten everything oh my servant what have you brought i brought you so many good deeds let's open it <laughs> nothing here only mouse dropping what happened the mice ate everything oh what kind of mice Shorat mice, the mice of fame. <laughs> I had wings of faith, now I have mice of fame. Pests, pestilence, viruses. May Allah forgive us. May Allah forgive us everything we're doing to show off, to be something that to make people say oh mashallah. it was so magnificent yes that's only the part you saw there's more magnificence you don't know about <laughs> if they knew my real magnificence they they would tremble ego thinks like that there was a person well, I'm shake this book about him he did something something small but something not uh, straight and a Another person, a friend of his, said, oh, my brother, you did such and such. You have this fault. No, no good. You're a hypocrite. You have this fault. And the person answered him, oh, my brother, you have a good eye. You spotted my fault. But that's only the part you saw. There are so many things. <laughs> I did it wrong that you never saw, you don't know about it. I'm asking forgiveness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You only blame me for the part that you saw. Too much blame. No one can hold their head up in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, I'm someone. I'm somebody. I there was a famous person who said, I am somebody. That was his theme song. I am somebody. We're nothing. We didn't create ourselves and we can't prevent ourselves from leaving the stage when the play is over. When our play is over, our role is over. We we're talking this afternoon about the Damir, the Damir, the conscience. Malana Sheikh Nazim, Allah bless him, and Malana Sheikh Hisham used to say, everybody has a damir, a conscience. A conscience. It's part of our original equipment as human beings. Like we have two hands, two eyes, tongue, nose, ears, head, feet, arms, legs, heart, liver. We have conscience also, Damir. 
it's a uh, not a uh, physical quality <laughs> it's a spiritual quality you can find it surgeon cuts you open to look for words can't find it but it's there original equipment in human beings he said it's our uh, gauge our radar our meter our indicator our uh, what we want to use something we use to our fact checker but the fact checking something we have to verify true or false yes or no anytime we do something or say something or hear something or see something or we intend to do something or we find ourselves in a situation where we have to choose an action to do this or to do that to embrace it or avoid it that damir that conscience comes into effect, into play. The close companion of Sheikh Mohideen Ibn al-Arabi, Habashi, his close murid, may Allah bless him, and Sheikh Mohideen, he said, when you come to that moment of decision, it's like you're riding on your horse and you come to a cave or a tunnel. It's dark, you can't see what's inside. You don't know whether to go ahead or wait. He said, you take a candle unlit or a lamp unlit and you put it forward into the darkness. If it comes back lit, it means, okay, you go ahead. If not, you pull up on your horse and stop and wait for opening. That lantern, that light is the conscience. It's informed by uh, the Sharia and Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the uh, insights and inspirations of the Shaykh, of the Awliya. They uh, sign on the Murid or Murida's heart, yes or no, true or false, to help you decide to go or to stop, left or right, uh, do or don't do. If that conscience is properly tuned, quickly you can understand what to do. But he said, we put a heavy load on it. We don't listen to it and we uh, bury it. So we can't hear it. We make ourselves not to hear saying, stop, stop, and we go, no, don't tell me what to do, I just don't stop for anyone. He, we have to learn to, he said, I'm not giving it as a lecture that I'm doing it and you people better do it too. I'm saying, he told all of us to try to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give more power to our conscience, our damir. Give more power to be able to pay attention to it. It will help us through so many situations in our life. Sheikh Hashem says we go from by Zuhrat. We pass through the doors that open in front of us, that Allah opens for us, like the opening of a flower. We saw the time lapse photography, the rose or the flower opens. Like that, the events of our lives open unfolding of events you meet someone go here you go there one person he said he intended to i was reading one of his books he said when i intended to write these books it was about spiritual subjects strange things began to happen to me i would meet somebody i never expected to meet that had the answer i was looking for i would go to a bookstore and there was a book i never Oh, this is the book I need. Things would start coming, opening for him. It's like that on the spiritual way. If your intention is good, things will start opening, inshallah. 
for you ask Allah to open for us good doors. Ya Mufatih al Abuab, Iftalana Khairul Bab, O the opener of doors, open for us the good doors and make us able to recognize them. So many duas from Prophet Sallallahu asking to be able to tell the difference between truth and falsehood, between a good door and a bad door, a good way and a dead end. Rabbi Arina Ashia Kamahiya, show me things as they really are. And Mulana Rumi said, you show the uh, good thing is something ugly and bad and we run away from it. You show the bad thing is something good and we run towards it. Show us what really it is so we don't fall into the tr trap, the trick of shaitan and dunya and nafis and hawa, shahwa. And Shaykh Mohideen prayed, Rabbi Habli istidadan kamina. O oh my Lord, grant me the perfect preparation to be able to receive your uh, your divine outpouring. Always, Prophet Allah is broadcasting, Prophet is broadcasting, so I say, Sheikh is broadcasting, but we're, we can't hear it, or everything is so uh, scrambled with interference, we can't pay attention to it or notice it. This is the month of seclusion, the 40 days of seclusion from the beginning of Zulkara up until Arafat and Eid al-Adha. And now we're coming, uh, moon is new, later on today, Friday, uh, maybe 10 o'clock at night, won't be seen. At least in the West won't be seen. So most likely Saturday night begins the Dohidra. Maybe somebody will see the moon on Saturday night and people will begin on Sunday. But it means we're coming to the last 10 days, the critical 10 days. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more power. We intended these 40 days as a khalwat, as a seclusion, to gather more power and more light, to attract more light and to keep that light from being lost. Grant more power, O oh our Lord, to our hearts during these days and nights, precious days and nights, to be able to receive your divine, holy, heavenly outpourings coming from the Lord Almighty, coming from prophets, all of us, coming from holy, coming from our shay. Grant us more power to catch it and to be able to follow it, enable us to follow it. He said, Marina Haka Haka Zukna Tiba, Ya Rabbi Marina Bati the Bati was Show us truth as being true and enable us to follow it and falsehood as being false and enable us to avoid it, not to follow it. That is an important dua to keep it during these 10 days, inshallah. Allah knows what's going to be important enough because I say so. But we're asking our Lord to complete it. Everybody did did whatever they could do during these 40 days. It's going to be far short of what Aulia did, but we ask from Allah's generosity to grant us something, something spiritual to come, to come to our hearts. It's coming the day of Arafat. It said that the Hajj is Arafat. The whole Hajj is Arafat. That's the key, the holiest day. May Allah Almighty make us to reach it in peace and happiness and to open our hearts for his Fuyudat, like this heavenly Fuyudat to come down on us.
all of us, our hearts to open. If not opening, what we can do? Our keys are in the hands of the key holders, <laughs> not in our hands. Nobody can say, I left my shake behind and soared to the heavens. It's impossible. We're all at the door asking, open for us. Take us by the hand. Take us up, open for us. Admit us to holy heavenly assemblies, even as the last ones <coughs> last by the shoes or past the shoes, not able to even to reach the shoes. Grant us during these 10 days and nights. If you can fast, if you have power to fast, you can fast at least Nakshibandi Arafat, to fast the day of Arafat. Arafat, uh, Ashura, six days of Shawal and Ramadan. May, that's Nakshibandi. May Allah grant us. May Allah grant us to be present. what was that ayat we were looking at before? Yeah. Surah. Hajj. Surah Hijr. Surah Hijr. Surah 15. So, so fifteen. Last. I will be on the show. You turn on the Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. Walakadna lamu anaka yadiku saduka bima yakulun. Asabi bi hamdi rabbi ka wa kumina sajidi. Wa humbud rabba ka hatta yati aka yaqeen. Serve thy Lord until there come unto thee the hour that is certain. I was remembering today. I should have had Imam read that. I was carried away with my... Uh, <laughs> and desire to be famous. <laughs> Sheikh Hashem was in uh, Vancouver one time at uh, the University of British Columbia, UBC Victoria. He was speaking in the auditorium to a big group of students, Muslims and non-Muslims. And some Wahhabi people came into the audience and were sitting there waiting for their chance to strike. And it came to the uh, <coughs> time of questions and answers. It was an interface. UBC. UBC. And Sheikh Hashem mentioned that verse. Imam Bilal, do you remember it? I forget it as soon as I recite it. 1599. Hijr, Surah Hijr, last one, 99. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. 
Both serve Allah, serve your Lord until certainty comes to you. And the Salafi people uh, very cleverly said to Sheikh Hashem, Oh, Sheikh, what's the meaning of that verse? They want Sheikh Hashem to say, like some uh, so called Sufi people, that once you reach a high level, you don't have to pray anymore. You don't have to carry the religious obligations. And Sheikh Hashem said, I know what you're trying to say. Yaqeen means mouth in his verse. You have to struggle and worship Allah all your life until death comes to you. That's the yaqeen, the certainty. That struggle goes on forever at every level, from the simplest beginner to the highest wali. Struggling is going on. Wahmbud. We read in the Juma. Uh, what is it? We didn't create. Something like that. We didn't create humans in be human beings and jinn except for our ubudiyah. The same word, wahbud, ubudiyah. And they said it means to know about Allah. Who knows himself knows his Lord, who knows herself knows her Lord. To know about yourself, to know about your Lord. And you have to struggle for that knowledge all your life up to death. Put that uh, to your head. It's the last ayat of Surah Hijr. And Sheikh Mohedin Sheikh said, Hijr is like a rock. Hijr means rock. A rock to stand on, to support yourself. The ayats of Quran are hijras. Awliya are standing on them and supporting their deeds through hijra. Through the, those ayats. And that's an important one. Wahbud rabbika hatta yati yaqeen. Keep it during these 10 days. Remember it. Remember it. May Allah grant us to recite it with sincerity and everything with sincerity to reach to its, its fruit, its openings. Yehurat Habib, Yehurat Al-Fatiha. Amen.